today we're going to take a look at OAuth. And what is OAuth? Well, it is a way for us to make a really simple sign up process. And the way that it works is that the user clicks sign in or sign up with, for example, Google. It could also be like Facebook, GitHub, lots of sites enables this feature. And then they will be redirected to that site and they will have to click on accept that our site can access their public profile on the OAuth site. And if they click accept, they will be redirected back and then we can retrieve a token from that site that will enable us to fetch some, uh, some details about their profile. So from there we can choose if we're going to create a user on our site or if we're going to keep a session from that site and just access like their name, their email. What we can access can be specified per site. And I want to build this as simple as possible. We're going to have a server on our side, a simple little node server that will handle these callbacks and the redirections. The purpose is to show the simplest way possible to achieve this. And in our example, we're going to use OAuth sign in with GitHub. Okay, so let's first take a look at GitHub's documentation for achieving this. And before this step one, the user has actually clicked on the button login or sign up with GitHub on your site. And then step one is fired off here. Users are redirected to request their GitHub identity. So they are redirected from your domain to the actual github.com domain. And if they click allow or if they sign in, they will be redirected back and this is a bit simplified we'll go into more details about how it actually works real soon and then step three your app accesses the api with the user's access token so let's look deeper into step one so the user gets redirected to login or authorize and we should have some URL parameters on this uh, URL. So it's client ID. We can also have redirect URI, but we can also set that on the OAuth application on the settings in GitHub. And we'll take a look at that as well. As you can see here, the client ID is the only one that says required. So we will just care about these two for this tutorial. Step two, so users are redirected back and we will get a code as a parameter. It says here, exchange this code for an access token. So we will give the code and we will get back an access token. And that token can then be used to get data from that user's account at GitHub. But I think it becomes clearer once we actually start to try it out in the code. Let's look at GitHub. I have this test app here that we're going to use and I am under settings on my account and then developer settings and then under OAuth apps. And here you can click new OAuth app and you can name it and you need to have a homepage URL and here is the redirect URI that we looked at in the documentation. So here, let's see what I have set for that in my test app. So here, once we are done creating the app, we get a client ID and a client secret, and those we have to use in our code. And down here, I have set the authorization callback URL to localhost since I am developing locally now and then OAuth callback. So I need to have a route that listens for the OAuth callback. So I have saved the client ID and the client secret. And of course I will delete these afterwards. You can create your own if you want to follow the guide. So now we are good to go with actually looking at the code. Before we dig into the JavaScript, let's just look at the UI 
And inside the server folder, we actually have a little front end here in the static map. And here we have the actual HTML page. So as we can see, we have some content for when you're authorized and some other content for when you're not yet authorized. And let's start the server and just look at this markup and the styling that I made. Here we can see app listening on port 3000. So if I go to localhost 3000, I see here, happy to see you newcomer and sign in with GitHub. So if we look at our main dot or our server file, we see that on the root URL, we're actually just serving this index.html file that I just showed you. And that's what happens in this view. We have three routes in this app. The first one is slash auth. And when we navigate to slash auth, we redirect the client towards GitHub. And we go to, you might remember this from the documentation, but it's login slash auth slash authorize. We have a URL parameter from of client ID. So here I use a package called dot env. And that allows me to specify some variables in a dot env file and then use them in here with process.env and then the variable name. And it's important that I have this line in the beginning of the file for that to work. If we look in the HTML file, we see that the sign in with GitHub button is actually a link to slash auth. So linking to slash auth triggers the redirect to GitHub. So let's set some breakpoints in the server code to verify that this works. So we already seen the get root that it works because we got the index.html file. So now let's go to the front end and actually click the link. And now nothing happens because we got stuck on the breakpoint here. So if I press play, we should be redirected to this and see the client ID as a parameter in the URL. I will press play and then we get redirected. So it says sign in to GitHub to continue to test app. So now I need to sign into my GitHub account. And I don't want to show you the length of my password, so I will just do this. And now we signed in and then we get redirected back. So now that I am logged in in this browser, the next time I do it, it will, since I allow the application, it will just go really fast. Now I got stuck on the breakpoint again, and I press play, and I just go to GitHub, I immediately, since I have a logged in session in this browser, I just get redirected back immediately. This is the route that I get redirected back to. So let's stop inside here and see what actually happens. So now I click sign in with GitHub. And before I get redirected back now, it's just waiting. And that is because we have this breakpoint here. So I destructured some data from the callback here. So we get an object that has query and code. And this code is important for us. So I create this object called body that has the client ID and the client secret and the code variable is added that we get from GitHub. So now, if you remember from the documentation, we were supposed to get the access token using this code. So we do a post to this URL and we pass in this body object. So this is the body and then we create some headers and call that opts. So we do a post, we pass in the body and the headers. And then when we get a response, we parse out the data.access token. And let's stop here. So now we posted to GitHub logging OAuth access token. And if everything went well, we received the token back from GitHub. 
and that is this one here. So now we have the actual access token, but we have it on the server side. So here we could do like a request directly and get the user's profile. And for this simple demo, I just did a redirect uh, to the root URL. And then I set a parameter as the token. So we should be able to see the token on the client side. So I press play and if we go that back to the browser, we have the GitHub token here. Let's also look at what happens on the client side. So here I have just created two functions to hide and show elements. And that is because I want to hide and show the unauthorized content and the authorized content. So per default, the authorized content is hidden. When we run this JavaScript code, if we have a token and the token is the URL parameter token, if we have that, we hide unauthorized and we instead show authorized. So this is some very simple demo code here. But that's all there is to it. Feel free to incorporate it for real in your own apps. And thank you so much for watching. If you like the content, like the video and be a subscriber. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video, hopefully.